Hello, everyone. This is a difficult topic to deal with. Uh, it is called domestic violence. Uh, for those with disabilities, we are at a much higher rate to be victims of uh, DV than any other population. So if you are an abuser who is listening to this, my request is that you go to counseling. That is the first step. And you can stop listening to uh, this recording and just call for a counselor and start there. If you want to email me with any other questions, please do so. But the rest of the video here, this recording, is not for you. This is for victims. All right. So now that it's just us. Domestic violence uh, occurs to women and men. I want to include the men here. Uh, and of course, it's, uh, the women are at a much higher rate of uh, ending up in domestic violence than men. But certainly, I have worked with men who are also uh, victims of domestic violence. Uh, my name is Lisa. I'm a social worker, and I use a wheelchair, So, uh, and I have hearing loss. So anyone with any kind of disability, I don't care what kind it is, whether you use a wheelchair, whether you are hearing impaired, whether you use a cane, a walker, or you have any kind of invisible disability, you are prone to domestic violence. Uh, and the reason is that we tend to <clears throat> have a little bit less energy and uh, we do our best to trust others. <clears throat> and in that realm, and we could slip into an abusive relationship. And so I want to first start with what is domestic violence and what does it cover so that you can think and reflect about are you caught up in one of these relationships. <clears throat> now, domestic violence, a lot of people relate it to uh, just the punching and fighting, kicking, screaming, uh, bruises, broken arms, you know, all of that. It's not, in domestic violence does not include only the physical fighting, okay? So it's not only that. I want to make that very clear. Domestic violence can also show up in the forms of monetary abuse, that you uh, don't have access to money, that the abuser keeps it or takes it away, doesn't allow you access. Um, domestic violence shows up in the form of uh, sexual abuse. Um, domestic violence also shows up in the form <coughs> of uh, health, that they don't allow you to go to the doctor when you need to, that they deprive you of the needed medications that they take the medications away from you and they sell them to somebody, uh, that they take the medications themselves. Uh, so they deprive you of any and all medical access. So that is uh, a tough one. Uh, domestic violence also comes in the form of, of verbal abuse and verbal threats. So it doesn't have to be physical. It can be you know, it can be, you know, threatening you all the time or that they're going to take away the kids or they're going to take away, they're going to hurt somebody in your family. Uh, so those kind of threats, or I'm going to do this to you tomorrow if you don't do X, Y, Z. So it can be verbal only. And it's still domestic violence. Um, <clears throat> domestic violence also can show up in the form of uh, abusing you in terms of housing, that they throw you out, that they lock you out, that they take your keys away, that you have to sleep outside or go find a place to sleep uh, because he just locked you out. They make you sleep on the floor. They take away your wheelchair. They trash your, your hearing aids or your cochlear implants. They don't touch you at all. They just destroy your property. 
or they prevent you from having access to your property. So if any of these things are happening to you, I'm sorry, but you do not deserve any of it at all, at any time, for any reason. No one has the right to take advantage of you. No one has the right to hurt you. No one has the right to abuse you in any shape or form. And I want that to be very clear. This is not your fault. You are not responsible for that person's behavior, for their anger, for, you know, their alcohol issues and their drug issues, which we're going to talk about in a minute. Um, so you don't deserve this at all. You deserve love. You deserve respect. You deserve care. You deserve um, what is true love. And especially because you have a disability and you need assistance, you need that support. Now, if you still don't believe that you're caught up in a domestic violence issue, that it's just kind of on the line kind of thing, send me an email. Send me an email. You know, my contact information is in all videos and, and podcasts, so you can get a hold of me. But this is the first step you need to do is to convince yourself, is this domestic violence or not? Do you need help? Because one of the things you don't want to do is to walk this line, this brutal line by yourself. I want you to think about that. Do not walk this line by yourself. You're going to need some help. So you're going to have to think about um, who would that person be? And maybe you don't have anybody um, at this time, but you can find an agency. Uh, seek an agency um, that uh, has a shelter, perhaps, or has a program for domestic violence. Go knock on their door, give them a call, and I'm going to leave uh, emergency phone numbers at the end of this uh, recording so that uh, you have what is needed uh, to uh, start planning for yourself, and especially if there are children. Um, I'm just pulling up the DB hotline for the USA so I don't forget. All right, let's get back to the, what is important. Uh, so the first thing you need to do is think who is going to help you. I don't want you to do this alone because in the exhaustion and the stress in the distress, in the hysteria, and the chaos, you could make a mistake and um, make things even worse. So I want you to find the necessary help, whether it's your brother, your dad, whether it's a neighbor, whether it's a close friend, whether it's an agency, the police, you can go to the police, uh, you know, and, and they'll give you the resources you need to start uh, planning. And that's the next step. You need to start planning. Make a safety plan for yourself. A safety plan. And who is going to be part of that safety plan? So, um, you know, and then part of that safety plan is how, in a safe manner, how are you going to pull yourself away from this situation, because you have to, for your sanity, for your health, for the people who truly love you, you need to walk away. The only person who knows the abuser, your abuser, is you. You know their patterns, you know their habits, you know their schedule, and with that, you, you can plan. Whether you need to flee to another state, uh, please do so. I have helped women flee to another state uh, when it was necessary. I have helped people flee to other counties, other countries if needed. 
Uh, but truly, um, if you have to flee, then plan for that. If you don't have to flee and you want to stay in the state, then make sure that you go to a place where you're going to be safe and stay there for a while. Uh, shelters are a good idea temporarily so that you can, <clears throat> the, the shelter has 24-hour staff and they are there for your protection. They have access to the police. The police know them well. So if you feel like you need that break to, you know, first go to the shelter, uh, get a breather, get some education in, get a case manager, and then think of a place where you want to go and live permanently. Once the, the, the initial danger is over for you, then, then do it that way. But there are all kinds of treatment, there are all kinds of plans that you can make. And the one you have to make is the safest one, uh, and not the hysterical one. I know that in the middle of the chaos, in the middle of the pain, in the middle of the fear, uh, we want to run. And sometimes we run in the wrong direction. So you want to make sure that this plan is solid, it is safe, and that it doesn't backfire on you. Okay, so um, again, you need to find who will be your support. <clears throat> who will be your support for all this? Um, usually I have the victim when they are, they have a solid plan. It, it looks like a safe one and a good one that you start uh, collecting things, <clears throat> the, the absolute necessary, your documents, uh, some, some clothing, and that's it. You, you're going to travel light, and you're going to travel fast. <laughs> so, uh, and and you need to do this when it is the safest, whether early in the morning or late at night or in the middle of the day, depending on what your abuser does. And I don't want you to hesitate because hesitation can cause things to to get worse. Uh, as you know, the, the abuser is manipulative, <clears throat> and in that, manipu uh, that manipulation, usually you are caught in a circle, in a cycle, that first, you know, he uh, or she, because women can be abusers, men can be abusers, people with disabilities can be abusers, but generally it's the other way around. Usually the guys are the abusers. Some women can be abusers. So I want the guys to feel like they are included and um, they are heard if you are trapped uh, with a woman who is stark raving mad and uh, is, is crazy and, and very abusive. Um, so what I was going to say is that uh, to find your support, that's going to be primary to find the support so that you have a voice of reason, you have uh, someone on the other end who's going to be there, who's going to listen to you, who's going to help you uh, go through these steps and get through it and get out of it alive. Domestic violence is the most dangerous, homegrown violence situation that anybody in the United States or any other part of the world goes through. The most dangerous calls that the police receive daily is domestic violence. It is unpredictable, it is high tension, high energy, and um, a lot of times people come out at the other end injured or, or dead. So, so this, is, this is really important that you listen uh, so that you get through this unscathed. For your sake, for the people who really care about you, for your children, okay? I want you to think about this. If you need to cry, you can. This is uh, one of the services that I've provided all through my social work years. Now I'm retired, but... Um, it followed me no matter what office I was in. I was consulted no matter what kind of job I was doing <laughs> in social work. Domestic violence was up there with priorities. 
And so I want you to know that you're not, you're not alone. You're not the only one. So again, because you have a disability, you are uh, vulnerable. And, um, but you have spirit. And you can do this. You have the strength. You have the knowledge. Uh, it's just that you are just not, uh, because you've been broken down and you've been insulted and your self-esteem has been torn to pieces a million times over, I get it. It's hard to break away because you're not, you hesitate, you can't think anymore. Um, everything hurts, you know, inside and out. Everything hurts. So um, I'm going to uh, state the number here. This is the number for the United States. And the uh, number for the DV, the National Domestic Violence Hotline, is 1-800-799-7233. That National Domestic Violence Hotline number, again, is 1-800-799-7233. And again, you don't have to wait for a particular person. If you get to a doctor or to an ER or to a clinic of any kind, uh, you, you need to speak to the nurse immediately, and they will help you out as well. Um, so, so that's really crucial. I want to talk a little bit about the legalities of this. You have the right to file a restraining order. So that means you need to go to court and testify to what this person has done to you, um, whether it's a family member, whether it's your spouse, whether it's a boyfriend, whether it's just a nasty person who got assigned to you um, and is uh, doing absolutely horrible and unjust things. So when you go to court, you just ask anybody in the hallway, what's the, where's the domestic violence office, or where do I pick up paperwork for, to file a restraining order, and they'll be able to direct you. You can go to a sheriff or to a police officer in the building and just ask them and just tell them, I need a, to pick up a form uh, for domestic violence for a restraining order, where do I go? And they'll be able to direct you. If you finally get a hold of a shelter or, you know, a domestic violence program <clears throat> in your area, they will go with you to the court and they will help you out to, to fill out the form. Uh, it's usually it'll just ask you, you know, your name, your phone number, um, <clears throat> your address, you know, who the person is, who's the, who's the person abusing you. And then you make your statement, a brief statement, and then you turn that in. Usually that same day, they'll give you the date for the court court hearing. Um, the abuser will be uh, notified uh, here in the state of Wisconsin once you are approved for the temporary restraining order. Um, the abuser usually is picked up, is arrested, and, and thrown in jail. <laughs> so that you are safe for a little bit, and then you can go to court, and that person has the right to, to be in court however they have to behave. You know, so <clears throat> police officer will be nearby and all that kind of stuff. So <clears throat> if they can't behave, they'll be kicked out, and then the judge or the commissioner will just ask you the questions in terms of what happened. Um, and then based on your reports, um, because they will give emphasis to your report, not what they, the abuser, is reporting. Uh, they will judge them, you know, depending on what they say and do. Sometimes they act really weird in court. <laughs> I've seen that a million times. But uh, don't hesitate. And, you know, the, the restraining order or the order of protection, depending on how they call it in your state, is only a piece of paper, okay? So the commissioner and the judge might say, okay, I'm going to approve you for a permanent restraining order for the next year, for the next three years. 
here in the state of Wisconsin, it can be approved up to four years um, because we've proven over and over again statistically that abusers really don't forget their victims for at least four years. So it takes them that much to get over you and to figure out how not to abuse others. So, so just know that that is available. Not everybody runs to the courts and files a restraining order. Uh, most do, but you don't have to. It's, it's a choice. Uh, and it just depends on the level of abuse and, and trouble you're going through that, again, you know the abuser more than anyone and what's going to be the safest thing for you to do. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, right now, if you know clearly that you're in a domestic violence situation, uh, you need to start uh, gathering things very quietly, you know, your driver's license or your ID, your medical card, you know, all those little things that are important to you um, and, and keep them in a safe place so that when you are ready uh, to go, you know exactly where they are and um, to make sure he or she can't find them and that um, they, they're not taken away as, as a threat or to, to keep you, uh, to hold you in the situation you're in. So um, pack up a few clothes, necessary things, and you can keep them at a friend's house, you know, at a neighbor's, at a family or a friend's house until you're ready to leave. Um, people can help you plan in terms of what you want to do. Again, this world is yours. You don't need to be in this abusive situation, and especially with a disability. Uh, we're already drained. Our energy is already drained due to our condition, and on top of that, being abused and tortured and threatened and God knows what else. Um, so you, you, you got to take your, your time. Just be careful on how you're deciding uh, what step comes next. So I really wanted to put this video or this um, podcast out there because it's, it's crucial. It's absolutely crucial for you to start planning. You do not have to be in this situation. Most shelters um, uh, and programs will have crisis intervention, domestic violence education, safety planning, uh, directly uh, connecting callers to services provide, uh, providers such as local shelters, referrals to agencies that provide legal, economic, self-sufficiency, sexual assault, elder abuse, children's, and other uh, related services. So that's kind of in general um, what, you know, can be provided in one of these programs. So, um, so I don't know. I'm hoping that this is, is enough. Um, certainly do not fall for the manipulations of the abuser for him saying, oh, I'm so sorry, I should have never done that, yada da yada da. Um, I won't hurt you anymore. And they've said this over and over. Sorry, I have some <clears throat> hot chocolate here. So um, it's, it, this is crucial. I want you to take this very seriously because no one deserves to be trapped like this. Um, and I get it, you know, it's scary, I get it, you're in pain, I get it, you know, you've tried to leave before. Um, usually abusers, uh, you know, the, the victims leave or try to leave at least seven times before they can really break away. So it is really, really critical that you not give up, that you know that we're out here and that we're ready to listen to you. And, um... We are hoping that this is the moment, that this is uh, a good time for you to really say, this time I'm going to make it. This time I'm really going to do it, and I'm going to get the heck out of here. <laughs> because 
you know, you, you deserve. You know, if you go to the domestic violence uh, webpage, you know, the phone number is there, and there's a chat. You can chat. And there's uh, a text. You can also text them uh, to uh, start. You type in start to 88788. That number again for texting is 88788. And you can even text. I really don't want you to be listening to this podcast or watching the video uh, while you are close to that dangerous situation. <laughs> Uh, I would prefer that you download it and listen to it in, in, a safe, in a safe area because it is emotional and uh, it is difficult. So, so I want you to uh, break away if you are in danger or the abuser walks in or whatever. Just close out, you know, download it now and listen to it later, okay? So... Uh, you know, there's all kinds of, you know, as I said, uh, domestic violence, what it is, what it is not. Domestic violence and love in itself, uh, a loving relationship should never hurt. Should never hurt. You should never have your rights taken away. You should never be beaten down emotionally or physically financially, sexually, legally, in medically, in any shape or form. So um, you don't deserve that. I think you know that by now. Um, you've probably gone around in your head over and over again um, about this. So, and I'm here to confirm and to be the voice of reason to tell you, you do not deserve any of this that's happened to you. Um, in a relationship, you should be caring, respectful, supportive, you know, all those positive and good things that you were looking for to begin with. But um, if that's not happening, then it's time to go. That person doesn't deserve you at all. So... So think about it. Um, make sure you gather those important things. Start gathering them. Uh, start putting things away. Uh, save up the little pennies you can. Uh, get a bundle of clothing uh, for yourself and, and put it away safely where uh, someone uh, can take care of it until you're ready to leave. So I'll leave it at that. Um, I've already given you the number for... Uh, the DV hotline, let me go back up to that number. That is 1-800-799-7233. That number again is 1-800-799-7233. And it is open 24-7. So you can call anytime, night or day. You can call, you can chat, you can go to the, to the website. Please keep uh, your delete the links or wherever you've been on the internet so he doesn't discover that on your laptop or a computer. Make sure you keep your phone safe. Um, delete any information uh, that might uh, lead him to think that you have been listening to domestic violence information or um, podcasts. So if you listen to it, great, and it helps you to think things through, great. Uh, but uh, delete it afterwards, okay? So to text, again, that number is 88788. And uh, I'm hoping the best for you. I'm hoping that if you are a victim who is a woman, a teenager, uh, if you are a guy being abused uh, and you have a disability, I truly hope and I'm standing strong for you and I am hoping that you will be able to leave in the next few days and regain your freedom, your sanity, and especially your health. This is Lisa with Power Wheelchairs for Success. Uh, this podcast is also um, available for hearing loss pathfinders. 
because uh, they also have disabilities in which they could be vulnerable. So it is also for them and for anyone with a disability who have, finds themselves in very difficult uh, relationships. All right, Lisa out and the best to you. Thank you everyone for being here and listening to this podcast. Uh, feel free to look around the channel of Power Wheelchairs for Success. Uh, also, feel free to subscribe if you feel this channel will be of good assistance to you. And like any video that uh, you enjoyed or any of the podcasts, uh, those two things help channel makers uh, to a great degree. So likes and subscriptions. So if you would like to also forward this uh, podcast to someone or to forward any of the videos on this channel, uh, that would also be great. So again, thank you so much for being here on Power Wheelchairs for Success. You could be anywhere doing anything uh, somewhere else, but you're here with us today. So thank you, and I hope you come again.